currently driving uh, north northbound through Israel. This time I'm going somewhere I've wanted to go for literally years. It's called Gajar. It is a border town that if you look at the map, its location is fascinating. It's technically half of the town is over the international border between Israel and Lebanon. After three long hours of travel from Jerusalem, we have made it to the village of Rajar. And this is really exciting because uh, it used to be not so long ago, the last time we tried to come here about a year ago, there is an IDF checkpoint, an Israeli army checkpoint at the entrance to the village. It's still there. Uh, but now that Israel has opened access to civilians, uh, you can get further. Now, what's also interesting is that just a little bit past that IDF checkpoint and pretty much where I'm standing, all the stuff you can see in the background here. So... For those interested in Israeli borders, and yes, border spotting is a thing, generally you can get right up to borders uh, between Israel and its neighboring countries for reasons of security. Typically, those areas that do really, really abut the border are called closed military zones and only the IDF can go in them. So this is typically what, it's look what it looks like. The fences all have these numbers on them barbed wire stuff that tells you you're on uh you're you're approaching a border so where we are where i am at recording this video from is just at the entrance to the village the blue line i'm going to uh pinpoint exactly at what point we cross the blue line it's about probably 50 meters up that way this road actually crosses the blue line and the blue line is effectively israel's de facto border uh with lebanon the countries are technically at war uh, so it's not a it's not a border that's been agreed upon, but that serves as the international border. So where we are at the moment is the entrance to Rajar. People are coming in and out of the village. It's an Alawite village. We're going to check out a little bit of stuff uh, that is in uh, on the Israeli side. We're going to check a little bit of stuff that technically is in Lebanon. One more thing I will say: there's signage up um, from the from the Israeli army from the IDF asking for visitors to treat the local residents with respect. So I'm trying my best, despite holding a microphone, uh, not to make too much of a spectacle of this, but if we can get anyone to talk about uh, their life in the village, that will be uh, amazing as well. So where I am currently standing at this point in Rajar on this road, according to Google Maps, I'm standing almost exactly on the blue line. The side of the village, this way, was the Klalit Health Clinic, one of the health funds, is located on the Israeli side. And if I swing around this way, and I start walking backwards for about 10 meters, trying not to get in the way of traffic, I'm now crossing into Lebanon. And on the Lebanese side, the blue line, as you can see on Google Maps, I'm now over the blue line and in Lebanon. So clearly the blue line itself, the de facto border is not demarcated in Rajar, uh, but you can pass between the two sides freely. And that's what makes this, for border spotters, one of the most interesting villages in the world.
So I'm recording this video on the lookout point in Radjur and what you can see behind me, all those houses in the distance over here and also over in this direction, located across a uh, riverbed, only probably about 100 meters away, those houses are in Lebanon. Now, I was wondering from my limited abilities to research this place on Google Maps, how Israel could have taken control over the entirety of this village um, while well, half of it being a Lebanese territory. The answer is that there is a sort of, I guess, de facto border fence running around this village, which is uh, physically cutting it off uh, from the rest of South Lebanon, which otherwise would just be somewhere you could walk into from uh, any point here and it's uh, crazy to think about. The history of Rajar is fascinating like many places in this uh, part of the world. It's changed hands many times over the course of history. Most interestingly perhaps since 1967. In 1967 Israel conquered the Golan Heights or according to lots of international uh, community members occupied the Golan Heights and when that happened the village of Rajar was for two months effectively no man's land. It was used to be part of Syria, now integrated into Israel. The villagers petitioned the Israeli governor um, of the Golan, the newly appointed Israeli governor, in order to be uh, integrated into Israel. Even those Alawites, they feel their identity is more uh, towards Syria. Now, of course, given the blue line demarcation, the fact that this village was halfway over the line was problematic and has been the subject of a lot of disputes uh, since. Also worth pointing out, you can see behind me as well in the background, a couple of UN stations and the UN blue line, which is the de facto international border between Israel and Lebanon is actually marked out with little these kind of little blue cylinders and the exact course of the blue line itself is a matter of dispute. There's a UN mission, UNIFIL, the United Nations uh, Interim Force in Lebanon. A major part of their mission is coordinating the exact route of the border between the Lebanese Armed Forces, the LAF, and the Israeli Army, the IDF. So I plan to interview residents of Rajar about their identity and uh, to go drinking in the Blue Line restaurant has kind of failed on both counts because uh, the Blue Line restaurant, which is a restaurant on the Lebanese side, is not, uh, it's not open currently and there's literally almost no one here. It's kind of eerie. We've seen like a few uh, kids playing on the streets, but that's pretty much it. All the houses around um, where we're traveling here, they just look empty. So it's kind of a strange place. I uh, didn't get to do quite the investigative uh, piece of documentary work that I was hoping for here. But nevertheless, if you are here and you want to check out Rajar, besides all the border stuff, I think it's a really fascinating place. And perhaps you'll have better luck than me in, uh, in solving the mystery of uh, this village.